Hi everyone, today I've decided to tackle this picture. This is an absolutely gorgeous picture from Johanna Basford's Miniature Enchanted Forest. Now, there is this version of it on the right hand side of the page which has a bit more detail and there's this slightly more simplified version of it on this side. I'm going for the simplified version just because I don't want to take hours and hours doing it. I'm going to make a start. Now I'm going to be using Arteza pencils today. Um, these are um, these just happen to be um, out on my um, counter because I've been using them for something else, and I thought it'd be a nice chance to try them out on something with fine detail. I'm just trying to select what colour to start with, and I'm going to use the forest green and do this tree in the middle. I'm going to start with the tree now. I'm just going to do a layer of green all over the tree to start with and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to make it um, look a little more layered up because Johanna's drawn us these little layers on the tree so we'll have a go and uh, see what we can do with them so it's this is just such a gorgeous picture um, I was felt a bit nervous about even starting it. I've seen a couple of versions of it now and it's um, given me a little bit of confidence to have a go. I also keep reminding myself that this book is quite cheap and I could just go and buy another copy and uh, have another go at it. So uh, it's just such a lovely, lovely picture. I feel that Johanna must have been thinking about her new book, Worlds of Wonder, when she drew a sort of house on a boat it's very much seems in keeping having watched her flip through so what I'm going to do now is just even out the color on the top of the tree I'm going to leave that one like that but here I want to make have it darker under here where this line is to make it look like there's some sort of overlap in the um, in the tree in the um, needles I should say of the tree and I'm just going to even that bit out so here again a dark layer under here and then gently even it out down this sort of section and you could use several colours for this but I had enough trouble trying to decide what colour this was already several need a fairly sharp pencil for this I would say because of it being quite a small picture so uh, keep your sharpener handy and make sure you've got a nice sharp sharpener because I have found that um, with all brands of pencil if your sharpener isn't sharp it, the leads will break and you'll keep sharpening and sharpening and they will just keep breaking and so and it's quite hard to know whether it's sharp or not if you've had it quite a while that's a good guess but uh, you could there are a few things you can try before giving up on your sharpener firstly um, sharpen a normal graphite pencil in it and it will clean the blade off a little bit so if it's due to wax build up then that will get rid of that um, another thing if you've got a double sharpener like me you see it's got two holes I never use this big one I always use this little one so there's a blade here that never gets used so you can take the blade out of there and put it in there now when you're moving blades you obviously need to be extremely careful I use a magnetic screwdriver and then I can use it to lift the blades as well so I never have to touch them so there's a little tip for you because you don't want to cut your fingers there we go it looks slightly stripy doesn't it but it does make it look more interesting than just a solid colour I'm just trying to even it out just a little bit in a few places now the other two trees they look to me like they're the same type of tree and I'm going to do them in this sage green just so they different this needs sharpening <laughs> I nearly started singing then you really they don't want to hear that <laughs> no I usually sing the most when I'm ironing 
um, not because I enjoy it. It's not bad, it's not awful, but uh, it just passes the time. So I know some people watch telly and things like that, but the way I have to set up my ironing board, I have my back to the room and to the television, etc. So just sing. Why not? So this one's going to be the same as you. I'm just doing a layer. I'm not doing anything special with this one. It means the other one will stand out and look more interesting. Now the um, we've got the um, toadstooly slash mushrooms. Those are what I'm going to do next. We do need to do the stalks. No, the trunks of the tree. And I'm going to grab my cocoa brown, which is really dark, for these two. And I'm going to put a lightish layer down only to start with and then shade it slightly on the edges and it and if you bring that in it just gives the illusion that it's slightly rounded we can't we haven't got a lot of space to play with here but that's what I do with my tree trunks to just make them look a little more interesting the middle one we're going to do a slightly different color I'm just trying to look for the color that I want here we go the dark chocolate brown I'm going to do the same thing though. So a light layer of colour and then dark on the edge. Now you can see the, um, I don't know if you can actually, the lead on this one is splintered and that's because I was using a blunt pencil sharpener. There we go. And the grass I'm going to do next. I've got this grass growing on the boat and what would be a nice grass green colour? I think I'm going to go for the apple green. It's quite sharp as well, which means I don't need to sharpen it. And because these are very small, I'm not even able to stay in the lines, so I'm just doing this one colour. Now because we've used some brown on the tree trunks, we've got all this wood to do as well so I'm thinking about a different colour brown for the wood. Now we have got a sienna brown but it's quite red in not in the way that I want. I'm going to go for this burnt ochre colour and again it is red but not I think it looks more browny and I'm going to start with this so I'm going to do it darker here at the top and then just fade the colour a bit towards the middle so it just looks like it's catching the light on the front of the boat there, do you see? I don't know if that's going to work completely but we'll keep going with it and see what happens. I'm going to do a similar thing here on this bit. I think this needs to be a bit darker though. There we go. And I'm trying to colour in the direction of the wood. So this bit I'm going to do across. I'm actually going to turn the book. I hope that doesn't make you feel too funny. But I'm going to go across with the colouring on these bits. And it's easier for me to turn the book slightly to do that. And the great thing with these little books is that you can turn them. Of course you can turn any book. But um, with the larger size books I don't really have room on my desk to turn them very well. But these are so little, they, there's plenty of room. Well, that's interesting, that one's thicker, look. Now I'm doing that, now this bit I'm going to do like I did, a little bit of fading in it and a little bit darker because it's sort of like the edge and it could be a different type of wood. Don't forget to do in there. Gonna miss out the wheel for now and move to this bottom area and just do this but I hope this isn't making you feel weird. I know someone did say one time the camera a camera angle made them feel a bit funny. It's quite difficult because I don't I use an actual camera, not a phone, it's actually a video camera. And it's quite hard, the tripod is quite strange. But uh, Hopefully it's okay. As you see, a little bit darker on these bits. And here. And this is 
being held up by these. There we go. I'm just going to turn that back round, try and make sure it's in shot for you. Now the wheel, I'm going to continue with the same colours but make it darker. And as you can see I'm trying to colour in the direction of this circle. It's such a cute little picture isn't it? Johanna spoils us doesn't she? Now here I'm going to go darker here and lighter out towards the edge. Now I think this behind is all something so I'm going to grab a different brow. Um, Maybe we'll go for this one, this is the camel brown and just sort of gently shade this in a little bit. I'm using the edge of the pencil this time and just doing a gentle layer. I realise we've got a few bits that are different. I'm just getting a layer down and we'll get to these other bits. So that bit is a bit darker so I'll go over that with another layer to darken it up and this bit I think could do with being a little bit darker than the other bit. There we go. There. Okay. Now we've got these circles. Woo! We're very squiffy, aren't we? And we've got the water. I'm just going to do the water. I'll show you how I'm going to do the water. I'm going to grab my teal. Now I looked at Emily Illustrator's beautiful version of this. And she just did like a little hint. Like this. And that's what I'm going to do. She's got such a delicate, beautiful light touch. I don't think she didn't, I didn't see a video. I don't know if she did one. I just saw her finished version of the picture and it was just lovely. And it just inspired me to have the confidence to colour it in. Do you see, I'm just gonna do very light. There we go. Now these circles are the sort of life boys, aren't they? Now they're usually red and white striped or orange. And I think I might do them an orange colour. I don't want them really, really, really bright, like they would be. So I'm going to grab this vermilion and just do them in that colour. And then they sort of, oops, massively out of the line. Um, they stand out a bit, but not hugely. I've also got these ropes to do. Now usually I do rope in a sort of goldish colour see what we've got. Um, yeah, maybe the turmeric yellow is the one to go with and uh, I'm just going to do them all the same and the, these little round bits that seem to be used to hold them. I'm not going too fancy with shading because it's a little picture. I do want to do is make these mushrooms stand out with a nice bright red. So tomato red or true red, I think we'll go with the true red. And now normally with these I would shade them across. So I would do them darker on one side than the other, but I'm not. I'm just going to do them all with the same lovely bright red colour. There we go. Just try and get a decent layer of colour down so they're lovely and vibrant. And I'm going to leave the dots white. I think I could do with that being a bit sharper. A sharper pencil. Oh, that's split. <laughs> a sharper pencil puts down a darker colour and I don't know much about how it all works but I think it, it because it's sharper it's easy uh, for it to push the colour down 
into the paper. I don't know why mushrooms have to be red and white, but in my head they usually are. Now the stems I'm going to do in grey. I'm just looking for the grey. I can't find it. Um, oh, there it is. This um, the charcoal grey. It's not really dark. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have called it charcoal. And that one we can't really do with anything with. But this one, the stalk and the underside in a grey. Now, I look like I've forgotten to do a bit there. I'm just going to grab the um, the burnt ochre. It doesn't look like it's... I did it all. Maybe I just didn't do it hard enough. There, it's better. Now, we have the lantern. Now, in my head, that would be silvery. But I've used the grey, so I'm going to use the elephant grey. And try to make it look as silvery as I can. Now I'm doing a solid line on these very tiny bits, but on here the idea is to try and lighten it towards the middle so it looks shiny. I think that's okay. Brilliant, but it's okay. Then a little candle flame, I'm just picking my sharpest um, orange, which happens to be the pumpkin orange. I'm going to do it orange, and then I'm going to do a yellow inside. I'm going to use the turmeric yellow, which we used before, in there. Make it look really vibrant and pretty. And then I'm going to grab <coughs> this lemon yellow and just do some light coming out of it because we've got some lines here I just think it finishes it off a little bit and now we've got the house and what colour for the house I don't know always a bit tricky I think we'll start with the windows and we'll do those in the turmeric yellow to make them look like there are lights on inside the house and it's really warm and welcoming I think that's a good start there isn't, I'm looking for a sort of brick colour, there isn't really a brick colour, but it wouldn't be a brick house on a boat, would it? Or would it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm going to do a bit of a grey roof. Um, I'm going to grab this slightly darker charcoal grey and just start it darker there, a bit lighter as we go up. This is a sort of tiled roof. Hmm, we could do it brown, couldn't we? Could be wooden house. Or we could have a look for a I'm thinking this this rust red looks a little bit brick like, so I'm gonna do that. And I'm just gonna try it gently and see how it comes out. I think that'll work. I don't want it too hard. So I'm going to make it a bit dark on that bit just so that it looks a bit different. And I'm going to do quite a gentle layer across the whole of the house. You need to watch where it goes down here. It's here and here. And then here and here. And then it goes behind here. slightly darker colour. I think I might do that chimney a bit darker. Now I'm just going to do the edges to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. A bit dark on the edges seems to just help it look a bit more rounded. I'll just do the same on the house just so that it doesn't look completely flat. Although you wouldn't expect a house to be rounded and a bit of shade shadow under the roof. I don't know if that really worked. Let's do 
a bit more defined. There we are. I'm going to leave that there. So there's our little um, houseboat, I guess it is, with the forest on. I think it's such a wonderful idea. Um, Johanna is so clever. And there we go. So I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.